All right, so I just wanted to create this quick uh, video about adding a like a newer alternator onto your 280Z. So here I have a 77 uh, 280Z. And so I guess I had a little bit of a challenge trying to figure out the wiring. First time I've really rewired an alternator, but I just wanted to go over uh, the wiring, how I did it. So pretty much long story short, um, this is a alternator off of a, I think it's a 1998 to 2004, um, Nissan Frontier. And so you can just pick these up at like any auto parts store. Generally, I think this one cost me $150 and it was a, it's a 70 amp, um, and it bolts in just like the other one. Um, and so everything uh, looks to line up pretty well. And so I actually have another one. This is one from Z Car Depot that, that went out, but um, I ended up just looking up the model number and all of that, and then figuring out that it was from a Frontier. So uh, this will be the same 70 amp one that you get off of Z Car Depot. I just have to make one modification, which was it came with uh, this like spacer thing. Um, on the other one, it was placed in like this. And so um, pretty much I had to just kind of like pound it out and I used the other one from this one because it was like uh, just like a cylinder without the, the lip on it. Um, and so with the lip, it was actually a little bit too, uh, I guess like narrow in here to fit um, over the alternator bracket. So I should hammer that out. I think if I was to want to reuse this, if I would have just reversed the sides so of putting it in this way, um, I think everything would have been fine. And so I would have been able to uh, do that properly. It still would have held uh, great. So. In terms of actual like bolt up, it is pretty much straight up bolt on, no problems. You know, it's got the same belt type and all that. Um, this one went bust. I don't really know why. I dumped a bunch of coolant in it and it just kind of stopped charging after that. So I could have messed it up doing that or doing other things. I'm not totally sure. But so in terms of wiring, uh, when you undo this wiring harness, uh, there's going to be a different type of connector, and so you have to cut that off. Um, but realistically, um, you're going to have your a white and black uh, ignition cable. Uh, so that's gonna go to your ignition. So uh, whenever your like you know ignition's on, uh, the alternator will run. And you can always test this, but this alternator at least, um, if you turn the key to on, you can hear it do a slight hum. So I can go do that real quick. So if we take the look, I don't know if you guys will be able to hear it, but you can hear it'll be a slight hum. So that's one way you can know that things are hooked up properly. Um, you can always do a voltage check too. So checking with the multimeter on this one. Um, yeah, so if you look at this, um, the ignition will be hooked up on the left side of the cable. And then this one is going to be your like sense, um, sense wire. So this will be sen sensing voltage. Um, I believe on Z Car Depot they talk about putting this to the 12 volt post. Um, although this will allow your charge light to work. Um, the other modification I believe is you're gonna have to uh, cut this wire so that you can hook it up to the 12 volt post of the alternator. Um, and then so once you do that, this should also be grounded. I just haven't uh, gone around to doing that. Well, you just like bolt it down. It should reduce uh, interference from the alternator. And then we also have our ground cable um, on the alternator as well. So four cable, four. Uh, cables there. Ground is just grounded in the alternator. Power is just going, you know, to power to get power. Um, we have our 12 volt sense on the right, and then on the left we have our um, like ignition uh, telling the uh, alternator like when to actually be generating power. Um, this is quite important. Um, one thing I believe, if you have this on all the time without the ignition going, uh, your car pretty much won't turn off because it never cuts uh, power because the alternator will keep providing power. So it is quite important that you at least know that you're getting like power off or you won't be able to stop uh, your engine without, I guess, like disconnecting or unplugging. Um, the other thing to note here is this is pretty specific to the 77, but because these are internally uh, regulated, you're going to have to uh, mess with I guess remove your externally regulated thing and you'll have to jump these. Um, I'm going to do a more permanent solution. All this is held up uh, pretty good. And uh, I'll link a diagram because uh, there's actually a pretty good guide to doing this. Um, 
And so this kind of accomplishes a couple things, but uh, mainly one thing that you can look for if you've done this right is you should be seeing 12 volts on your sense wire. So this yellow one. Um, so if you're seeing like battery power here, then that means that generally this is hooked up, right? Um, or at least that aspect of it is working. So I think on this one, we actually jump let me see. Yeah, we jump uh, power, so you can see here the white and red. Uh, pretty much universally around the car, that means that it's like just straight up power um, all the time. So you can see that's going and just jumping to this yellow wire, which is the same yellow wire here, or at least in the same uh, circuit. Um, the other one you're gonna be going from a blue to I want to say it was like a white, uh, white and black. Um, I'm not sure exactly what that does. I'll probably have to take a look at the diagram uh, to do that. Um, but once you have that all hooked up, um, you should be good to go with this alternator. Um, it's definitely worked for me. The charge light works. Um, that was something that wasn't working before. But if you go take a peek inside of the car. We can see the charge light works. And then uh, if I was to start the car, I'm not going to do it right now. But if I was to start the car, then the charge light uh, would turn off. And then we're also paying attention to make sure that voltage uh, just goes to 14. Yes, there's a lot of janky wiring stuff, but I figured I would make this short, I guess, guide for anyone else looking to do a quick wire up. I'll try and leave some links in the description on all the parts I used here, but um, yeah, it's definitely been a good solution. I haven't run this long term. This has only been running for a little bit. The alternator worked. The other one worked for a little while, and then that one went bust, which I think was unrelated to any like hookup problems. Um, I'll definitely update this if there is a problem, um, or if you guys notice anything wrong that I've done here, that'd be great too, but I'm pretty confident of the solution. Last time also this came disconnected, so I wouldn't actually leave a jumper here because this is a problem where that comes disconnected, and that could have messed with it as well. So yeah, that's it. Um, I don't know if you guys are interested in the other aspects of my electrical system here. So I've done a lot of rewiring uh, from, you know, adding, removing the fuse box and adding this type of fuse. Um, this is for an amp down here. So that's going to be something different, but um, that stuff. And then I've also more or less rewired the entire interior of the car. I don't know how well you'll be able to see this in this lighting, but um, I've done that too. So. I feel like I'm relatively knowledgeable on that, so all the headlight wiring and stuff. First car I've ever done this on, and it's been an absolute pain, but yeah, got that done. All right, well, thanks everyone for watching. Good luck installing your new alternator. Uh, hopefully, it doesn't cause you any problems. See you guys next time.